and you're back to another episode of PT Meal Podcast, a buffet of play, therapies, movement, exercises, activities, and leisure, all packed in a hearty conversation of the physical therapy profession and practice. I am Johan De La Paz, your host, and as always, welcome back to the show. So in the past episodes, we've talked about being a physiotherapist in different countries, in Australia, in the US, in the latest, we're in the Middle East, in Qatar, in UAE, and Um, Saudi, yeah. Uh, so for today's episode, we are going to talk about how it is to be a physio a physiotherapist in Canada. So in uh, to help me with that topic and for the conversation is my guest Reina Nakahata. Rain, Reina, welcome to the show. Hi, Paul. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> so yon, kamusta ka jan? Um, very cold. We just had like a blizzard yesterday, but uh-huh. everyone's good. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> parang okay rin naman kasi since um, kumakalat ang COVID. So, at least everyone's inside. So. <laughs> tama, tama. How many inches yung uh, snow nyo? Um, I didn't go out yesterday. <laughs> like, I, I'm, di ko iya-attempt. But then like from the pictures or like from people um posting, I've seen... Like cars buried oh. down, or oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad yesterday. <laughs> Ayaw ko magshovel sa ganon ano. I know. <laughs> All right. So, but before we start with our conversation about being a physiotherapist in Canada, uh, could you give us a little background on uh, your physical therapy journey, Philippines, to what you're doing there? Okay. Um. So I took my um, bachelor's degree in University of Santo Tomas, and then I graduated last 2016. Um, I worked for a while in um, Philippine Orthopedic Institute. It's in Makati. Um, I was able to handle some of my interns to hi friends, <laughs> hi colleagues, hi friends, and then um, decided to start fixing my papers going to Canada um, early 2018. And then finally flew and moved to Canada fall, October of 2019. And then um, I've been a physio, they, well, they call it like physiotherapist, um, resident or interim physiotherapist here. And then, yeah, so that's kind of like where I am right, right now. <laughs> All right. We'll talk about more uh, on those terms later as we talk about the process of becoming a Physical ther- physiotherapist there in Canada. But before that, uh, why Canada? What attracted you to Canada uh, moving there? I think because like initially, um, a lot of my friends after like post-grad would start thinking like which countries to move in. And like the major three was like US, Australia, and um, Canada at that time. Um, I didn't want... Um, Canada. Oh, I didn't want Australia because it was like for personal reason. I didn't want to be too close to the Philippines. I wanted to be like away <laughs> from my family. Gano, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. We, we, we missing each other factor. So I was uh-huh. like, okay, I canceled out Australia, and then so I was left with um US and then um Canada, and then I remember I went to. I traveled with my family last 2017 to check out how the scene is in New York. And then, because mm. if I was going to move um, to US, it's probably going to be in the New York area too. Uh-huh. And then um, it was only like by accident that we uh, cro- uh, we crossed the border to see how it was in like um, Canada side. And then my dad, like my dad liked it first in Canada. Mm-hmm. He said like the, well, he's old. So he liked the chill Um, vibes compared uh-huh. to like how fast-paced New York was going. Right. And then um, my best friend actually um, told me that she had plans on going, like migrating to Canada too because like her mm. family, she has like family members over here. So that gave me the idea of um, choosing Canada more than the US. But then like throughout mm. my journey over here, I think um, what attracted me the most is how they have universal health care over here. Mm-hmm. Um, right. right. So, it's like, it's very comforting knowing that um, if anything happens to you health-wise, you know that the government has your back. Like, hindi ka mamomoblema na, okay, if I get sick, like, what's gonna happen? Am I gonna um, shell out too much finances? Ganon. So, that's like one of the, um, 
like um pros that I saw coming over here. And then um another one is it was easier to get um a status over here. So it's easier to get like PR over here than green card over there. Really? Um, yeah. Like okay. it only takes you like a year before you can apply for your PR. Wow, I didn't know that. I had a yes. friend and and he waited for a long while before he, he became a PR. Mm. That... Oh, well, because it's like COVID now, uh, everything got delayed. But the, uh, in, in normal time, it's uh, usually like you only uh, have to work for a year. And then so you, you declare that you've been working here for a year and then you can apply for PR now. Uh, okay. And then I guess like another one... It was also like the time that I went here, a lot of like Asian hate crimes were happening in the US too. Right. So like I was um, confident enough to say that nothing major like that happened over here. I, I mean, mer- meron, meron, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's very subtle compared to the ones happening <laughs> in the US. So <laughs> and considering like my, my workplace is, like to give perspective, like I work in an area where it's like the Bronx, so it's very shady, it's very sketchy over there. But I never got like I never got scared working there. I never got like any threats or any like hate crimes over there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Better to have it subtle than you know obvious. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's true. Like, like right, I'm very right, right. petite then, so like <laughs> if if anything happens to me, I don't know what I was gonna do to. <laughs> right, right. Okay, that's nice. Um. So recently, there's a lot of, uh, there was a buzz about the processing of uh, becoming a physiotherapist in Canada because there was changes. Um, yeah. So uh, could you give us, you know, could you just describe to us the process of of how to become a physio there in Canada? And later, let's discuss yung, uh, the changes, how it would affect the, the present or the future applicants. Okay, mm. so um, usually you start off first by the credentialing process. Mm-hmm. You can do this one um, from like how it was for me. I did everything back when I was still in the Philippines. Um, so you do, you get papers. I remember I was doing this one with my colleague and we had mm-hmm. to be like very organized because um, there weren't too many people going to the um, Canada at that time so even the university where I was from they were kind of like confused on like which papers they needed to um, send like uh, we right. had to be on top of our game because like lagging lagging me male and then uh-huh. um, so they like we send it through DHL but then from Canada pa balik sa amin, it's always slow like this snail mail so kapag may male it takes weeks talaga bago makorek so kailangan uh-huh. lagging on point na tama na yung documents mm-hmm. um so you get um there is like two we made like two um columns over there so like papers that um your university has to send the credentialing body in Canada which mm-hmm. we call um CAPR or Canadian Alliance of Physiotherapy Regulators so there are like um papers that your university has to send them directly and then mm-hmm. some um um files that you would like you personally have to send it to um CAPR mm-hmm. and then if nothing goes wrong because uh, um like i said it was me and my friend so many things went wrong because like <laughs> i don't know i think that time there was a transition too with like the internship coordinator so mm-hmm. hindi nila din alam kung what, like what was going on uh-huh. and then um it took us like almost a year then finishing the credentialing process but i like the people i've helped afterwards it only took them like 3 to 4 months oh, para okay. maayos yung sa kanila yeah mabilis din pala if ever yeah mm-hmm. and then after that one when you get everything uh when you pass all of your requirements it's going to take them around um yeah like 3 to 4 months to process that one and then in the meantime while they do that one you can enroll every everyone, yeah, everyone. Not not just um the international applicants, even the ones that are graduated from um Canada. There's this co- um course that's called like um Introduction to Canadian Healthcare System, which mm-hmm. is very um helpful because like tayo sa Philippines, we're not aware of how their their healthcare system works over here. Right. 
So, yung mga long-term care, they teach you like yung um, ano role mo as a, ano, as a physio sa long-term care, sa mm-hmm. hospital, sa ano, private clinic. So, they teach you about that one. And it's a requirement for you to take that course sa accredited university lang. So, that's why there was a post from like one of the review groups before na nagsabi na, Oh, you don't have to study when you I know when you when you want to be a physio in Canada, you don't have to study any more courses. Getting you know, I was like, that's not true, because everyone had to study that one. So, may mga ano lang. Like I don't know. Sometimes, because I comment ako sa mga <laughs> ano na that's not true, kaya <laughs> like I've been there. That's not true. Gan. <laughs> Baka selling so, point kasi nila. Yeah, which is, I mean, I get it. Like, they have to do it for their business. But at the same time, like, it's gonna be, it's gonna give false advertisement to people. Kasi mm. parang, syempre, they have the, this idea na, oh, uh, I don't have to study na pala, so less gastos yun. So, mm. pero kailangan, prepared sila na parang, okay, it's gonna cost me this much pala to be a mm. physio. Because it's very costly to be, like, to get your license. Uh-huh. And then, uh-huh. so, while, so, while your um, credentials are processing, you take the course, and yung course um it's you, relatively have, easy can you take it even in the philippines or yep. it's okay. just an online course yeah okay. and then it's relatively easy too so i don't think i don't think i've i've never um, met anyone who failed that course mm-hmm. it's kaya kaya nating lahat yan guys ah. if if <laughs> naging if naging physio tayo kaya natin yan it's ganun lang ah. and then Oh, before that one, you take the English test, so either TOEFL or IELTS. Oh, okay. Um, what did I, I take? Uh, I took the TOEFL one only because a lot of my friends um took TOEFL because they were all going for NPTE. So parang mm-hmm. lahat sila okay TOEFL, TOEFL, TOEFL. Yeah. So at least I had the idea na okay, um, I can ask her on how TOEFL went, tapos bibigyan ako ng tips. But then, after a while, I realized, mas madali pala yung IELTS. <laughs> Na-realize ko na, kasi I had to take IELTS din eh, eventually. So, sabi ko, oh my God, mas madali pala talaga yung IELTS nyo. <laughs> <laughs> Bakit ka nag ng IELTS if you took TOEFL? Oh, for visa purposes naman. Uh, so, is it better to take the IELTS na lang from the start? Oh, for for people kasi, and other people who would want to do that process for IELTS you have the general and then the academic mm. so for for the credentialing process they require you to take the academic one mm-hmm. pero for visa purposes they take uh, they let you take the general so okay. ako I took the general kasi for visa so madali lang so I'm oh. not sure yung academic, academic. oh <laughs> I see so you're still gonna take two English exams for two different purposes. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. I know. I know. <laughs> Yung hirap mabuhay. <laughs> All and right. Then, I guess after you take the English exam and then you take the um, the required course and then you wait. Um, after you pass the course naman, the university where you took the course would send the, I know, the score agad sila na mismo bahala isasenda nila sa CAPR and then um CAPR is gonna send you parang the uh, email not email they don't send email um sa paper na okay you pass all the requirements and you can schedule for the written exam na oh, so, so you have to wait for a snail mail talaga from them okay medyo nakakaba pala yan you can't access anything from the computer <laughs> okay and then, so imagine sometimes, kasi, like, we're all aware, hindi naman very organized sa Philippines. So, like, you don't know kung nasan na yung mail mo. Like, exactly. you're, like, <laughs> hindi mo pa matatrack kasi parang you just have to know na, okay, sabi nila na in two weeks, dapat may dadating na sa'yo na mail. Pag walang dumating, you ask the, you email back the, ano, CAPR, and then they're just gonna send you another one, which is gonna take another two weeks. So, yung buong process na waiting, that's the frustrating part over there. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so when I got the go signal na, na, okay, you can schedule in for, ano na, for the written exam, um, you, you book it online na. At least ito online na, hindi, yeah. ano, <laughs> hindi, hindi letters. Kasi, um, they're gonna hand you over to Prometric and then Prometric na yung bahala kung um, saang site mo gusto mag-exam, ganun. Okay. And, 
And then, so I took mine, the written exam, 2018, November. Mm-hmm. And then... And you have to take oh, it in Canada? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, also, ano pala, tips pala for anyone who's gonna take the exam. During that time, as a normal ones, they're only, they only give the written exam twice a year. So there is like one at around um, early early part of the year tapos meron yung late part of the year hindi ko hindi hindi na sabi sa akin kasi wala man ako kilala na physio at that time na nasa Canada eh. but then the tips pala for them is if you're an international graduate take the written exam on the later part of the year kasi ang mga makakalaban mo doon is mga international students then mm-hmm. if you take the one earlier kalaban mo is mga Canadian mga fresh grad na Canadian And usually, the way they score it is yung um, like Person. the top the oh, top percentage, ganun. Wow. So, pag matalino lahat daw kalaba mo, fresh grads pa, parang, tapos syempre sila Canadian pa. So, they, they know like may mga may mga parts na easy na talaga for them. Na it was a uh, template na alam na nila. So, parang sinabi sa akin na always take na ano, the later uh, the later one for oh. the written exam. Mm-hmm. And then for the clinical exam, take the earlier one naman kasi magbabaliktad naman for them. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, that's that's the tip before COVID. Ah. Ngayon, ngayon nagkahalo-halo na eh. Kasi <laughs> ang sabay-sabay na. na Oh, sabay-sabay na kaming na backlog eh. So, hindi uh-huh. na namin na. <laughs> Bahala then, na si Batman. Yeah. And then, um, 20, so 2018, November, I took the exam. It's gonna mm-hmm. take them around six weeks before nila ilalabas yung um, results. And then, I remember I was, nag- tour lang kami ng sister ko sa, ano, sa New York. And then, feeling, Christmas season na kasi nun eh. And then, nakakuha ko ng email. The email you, Same, same time zone naman kami ng, ng New York noon. Tapos mm-hmm. nag-email sila yung malapit ng maggabi, mga tipong ano na 10pm, gano'n. Sabi ko, <laughs> hindi, 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 they don't know how to chill over there. Ba't sila, <laughs> ba't sila magre-release ng score ng ganitong oras? And then, ayun, I passed naman. So thank God. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tapos, But then, after you pass the written, you're already a physiotherapist that can practice? So, That's the, you know, when you pass the written, you start to decide like which province do you want to practice because mm, right. every province they have different, you know, they have different requirements. Gotcha. So by that time, I went back home to the Philippines and then I started thinking my top two um, provinces was BC, uh, which is like the California of Canada in the West Coast mm-hmm. and Ontario, which is over here, um, East Coast naman siya, um, nasa baba ng, uh, nasa mm-hmm. taas ng New York. Um, so you start searching, you you go through sa online website nila to see kung ano yung mga different requirements nila. And then, um, actually, nung, nung namili ako ng province, hindi pa ako sure kung which one ko talaga gusto. So ang ginawa ko, nagpasa ako ng requirements to both, ano, to both um, colleges. Wala naman nagsabi na bawal. So, ah, okay. so ginawa ko gano. <laughs> So if meron meron they they store your ano eh they store your papers for two years uh-huh. and then kailangan ma-complete mo yung requirements for them to give you the ano the um the title na um resident physiotherapist um eventually na realize ko na requirement wise it was easier to complete yung sa ano sa East Coast kasi At that time, wala pa akong nakikilala na supervisor. So, as a resident physio, you would need to declare a um, workplace. Tapos, kung sino yung supervisor mo doon, mm-hmm. how long. Like, everything with regards to your ano, to your job. So, ilang hours ka doon, anong mga cases usually, what type siya na clinic, ganun. And then, kailangan magbayad ka na nung um, liability insurance, ganun, ganun. So, ang dami ng... mga um, requirements na when I compared East and West, it was easier to get my license pag nasa East Coast ako. Mm-hmm. So, Med- medyo na- na-confuse ako. So, mag apply ka pa lang for you to practice in a province, kailangan meron ka na agad supervisor? Yeah. So, you have to look for a job already? Yeah. Ah, okay. 
parang nakakalito nga yun. I know. <laughs> Dinito ako bigla. <laughs> Kailangan may, may i-declare ka na na, ano, na, na supervisor. Place. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Pero hindi ka pa pinapayagan ng province na yun to work. Hindi pa. Pero the supervisor knows all the process so they they know that you're looking to work in that province. That's why you're looking for a job. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, Baliktad siya when you're applying in the US. Kasi sa US, once you apply for a for um, the test, kailangan alam mo na kung saan state ka magpupunta kasi mag, doon ipapasa nung, ng NPTE, nung mm-hmm. exam, y- yung grades mo. At syempre, kasama na rin din, magtetest ka rin for the jurisprudence uh, or law exam of that state. So, sabay mm. na yon Sa Canada, i- iba pala. So, mag-take ka muna ng exam, pipili ka ng province or your state as well. Tapos, habang pipili ka ng, habang pipili ka ng province mo, maghahanap ka ng trabaho agad. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. kailangan, kailangan meron ka na nag-supervisor para, okay. maka, para i-release nila yung, ano, yung um, license mo. Okay. Gotcha. So, pero depende pa rin yun sa province. Kasi ang ginawa ko lang naman is um, BC and Ontario. Eh. So, hindi hmm. ako familiar sa ibang province kung anong hmm. meron sa kanila. Okay. And then, after that one, then you get to have your... Oh, um, one requirement pa that time is kailangan mag, um, you pay the fees for the upcoming clinical exam na din. Mm-hmm. So, para, para meron silang, ano, um... Parang assurance na you're gonna take the clinical exam. You're not gonna settle with just the ano, resident physio title. Uh-huh. But you mentioned earlier, diba, that the resident physio title only lasts for... For a year. For a year. Meron yeah. ba, may mga tao bang nagsisettle lang na magtatrabaho lang ng one year tapos hindi na mag-clinicals? Ano na, hindi na sila physio. Oo nga, <laughs> di ba? Hanap na sila ng career, ibo change na. <laughs> Nasayang lang yung effort nila. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, oh, ayun na nga. <laughs> so, but then, kasi like in that one year, you get to realize na talaga like, gusto ko ba talaga maging physio? Ah, sa bagay, like, yeah. Di ba? Right, right, right. So, bala sila, baka gusto nila mag-iba na ng career, bala na sila. <laughs> right, right, right. Pwede kasi parang test run lang sa kala. Sige, I'll check it out for one year and, Baka ayaw yeah. ko naman pala. Oh, pwede nga naman. Naniniguro lang siguro ang Canada that <laughs> will have money for it. <laughs> yeah. So, after one year, mm-hmm. um, you have to take the clinical exam and then, if you pass, edi, okay, perfect. Ano ka na? In, um, independent um, physiotherapist ka na. Mm-hmm. Um, then you don't need to um have any supervisor even the pay is gonna be higher syempre and then mm-hmm. um responsibility wise it's like more more than and mm-hmm. then if you don't pass the exam they give you three more months of extension from the one year na valid yung resident physio title mo just mm-hmm. to endorse patients to the next one ganon uh para hindi naman mabibigla yung pasyente, bigla na siyang walang pasyente, wala na siyang PT. Wala na siyang PT, yeah. And then, um, sa amin, you only have um, three trials to take the exam. And then, I used to think na, ano, na after three trials, um, baka naman, like, di, baka pag-aaralin ka ulit nila and then you're able hmm. to um, um, take the exam again. Pero apparently, wala na talaga, like, Hey, mag-change ka na ng career kasi wala na talaga. Ah, okay. So parang wala na talaga re- wala nang uh, refresher, wala, wala. Wala na. Fortunes. <laughs> wala na talaga. So like after the third trial, mag-isip ka na ng ibang gusto mo sa life, ganun. <laughs> sa club, sa club. I know. <laughs> And then um from what I heard then from people, Canada is also one of the most expensive country in terms of licensure of physio. Kasi heard that. Mm-hmm. in totality, like the written exam is gonna take you around um, $1,250 Canadian dollars. So in pesos, ano ba? That's a $60,000. Mm. And then that's the written. And then the clinical one is $1,700. Um, 
Magkano ba yun? Basta sabihin na natin close to 80,000. So in totality, mga nasa ano na 150k pesos just to take both the written and then the ano and then the clinical. Wala pang review classes yun. Did you take re- review classes to for the ex- uh, for the written exam? Yeah, so for the written exam, um me and my friend we ca- we decided to take a ka- parang Canadian based siya na um review class. Mm-hmm. But then hindi, hindi naman sa pagyayabang, pero it was very lackluster. Pero parang ang daming kulang. Maybe because like sanay tayo na who like pag naggaling ka kasi sa local boards, 'di ba? Very bombarded ka ng ano ng mga um, mga theories and yung mm. mga ano, ang dami mong inaaral. Pero when we went through that review class, parang feeling namin kulang na ang dami namin self-study na kami pa yung nag input mm. Ang maganda naman sa kanila is they're able to show you kung ano talaga yung mga outcome measures na talagang Canadian ginagamit. So, kailangan mm. alam mo yan kasi lahat sila na Canadian, alam nila yan. Mm. So, parang, oh, okay, at least, ayun, yung mga, yung basics for them, yun yung nakuha namin. But then, yung anything in-depth doon, hindi siya, hindi siya talaga in-depth. <laughs> <laughs> How was the exam? Para ba siyang format natin sa Philippines, like, Um, separated yung mga topics or is it like NPTE where everything is meshed in one one story or like parang dito kasi sa NPTE um, may isang case and all of the questions parang five to ten questions na galing doon na nandun na yung mga anatomy may mga PT apps doon may mga research questions na rin doon na all mix in that case So it's more similar to NPTE, yung vignette style niya na they're gonna give you a case scenario and then read through it and then five mga five question based on that mm-hmm. one. Um okay. I think I've asked around people who took both um the Canadian written and then the NPTE. Mm-hmm. A lot of them would say that NPTE is a lot harder than the um Canadian written. Mm-hmm. Um so Iyon. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. May, at least may perspective tayo. Kasi yeah. nung, nung nag-take ako ng NPTE, I, I, I didn't uh, undergo or go into like review centers. Parang uh, I just reviewed dun sa, sa books, mm-hmm. or, uh, uh, practice questions. Then sa agency kasi meron silang like parang weekly na questions din that they have, they had us ans- answer. So parang mm. na yung practice ko. Pero as for the formal review, hindi man ako nagpunta sa isang review center to to actually review for it. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, talking about, you know, um, finances, yung, yung cost, di ba malaki din yung cost ng pag-apply dyan? It's so expensive. <laughs> right, right. And you, you did everything by yourself. May way yeah. ba na other colleagues can do that process through an agency or ang only process papunta sa Canada is doing it yourself? Um, so, I haven't heard anyone who got here through an agency. Mm. A lot of the people I knew, um, they, they fixed their um, visa first and mm. then pagdating nila dito, it's kasi mas madali yung aayusin mo yung visa mo and they work for a couple of months just to earn money to get the exam rather than yung pupunta ka dito na naka, na physio ka na. Medyo uh, konti lang yung kilala ko na ganun. So parang uh, go there through a work visa, work there. Yeah. And okay, so paano yun? Paano ginagawa ng ibang tao na pupunta sila dyan through a work visa? Um, so, a lot, meron akong uh, a couple of friends who got here through student visa muna. Mm. So, they um, they got here through, kasi that, that, that's the easiest pathway here eh. Yun yung pinaka in, wini-welcome ng Canadians eh, kapag mm. magsustudent visa ka dito. Mm-hmm. And then, when they get here, ang course na kukunin nila is PTA. So, mag-physiotherapy assistant course sila dito, which is gonna take them around two years. 
And then um if you study that one here for two years, granted ka na ng ano ng three years na work visa. Oh, okay. So what they usually do is on the on the two years na um magpi PTA sila, they start the process. Um, credentialing process na rin. Mm-hmm. By the time that they get their work visa, they take the exam and then they're na. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay din to, naman. Uh-huh. to put perspective, I know someone na ano um she graduated from UE. I don't know mm-hmm. kung anong ku anong batch and then she worked for a while in UAE. And then she took um nag PTA siya dito and then sabi niya na no brainer daw yung PTA courses dito na parang eh, kung kung may cum laude sila siguro cum laude ka na pag nag ganun ka nag take ka ng course dito so madali lang talaga hindi siya stress na ano na aral mhm acha so yeah marami rin palang ways to cook yeah if financially constrained ka yeah. yeah okay so let's talk about the the new um news Uh, mm-hmm. yung changes <coughs> daw uh, parang there are some posts that say that na nagbago na yung ruling ng ano ng Canada na natanggal din na daw nila yung clinical um, exam is that true yeah so um until recently i think it was just last week that CAPR announced that they are discontinuing the clinical exam indefinitely siguro we're thinking it's because of um how omicron has already like boomed in the country. So mahirap talaga na mag ano. They in the past two years they've tried um the virtual exam. Um however, ako like personally I've gone through the virtual exam and then nag crash yung system nila. So ang daming nag panic, ang daming na traumatized kasi you're stuck in the room eh. like you don't know what's happening kung nag crash ba sila, nag crash ba ikaw. You mm. can't use your phone. You're just there in the room. So Um, they handled that one like very poorly mm-hmm. given that uh, they had like months to prepare for the virtual exam but then eventually they just realized that it's not gonna happen. So CAPR um, discontinued the virtual exam or like even the clinical exam and then sinabi nila na they're transferring the um, responsibility of the clinical exam to the provincial colleges. So Meron kasing um, legislature sa amin na it can't only be a written exam. Kasi yun yung, yun yung pinipetition namin eh, na parang bakit sa US written exam lang sila and kung ano naman sila, um, competent physio naman sila, bakit hindi pwedeng gawing ganun sa Canada, ganun. So it was, it's, it's written in, in our bylaws na kailangan two types of exam talaga. And... People have been trying to change that um, law, but it's gonna take some time. Eh, ngay- ngayon na may pandemic, eh. ngayon na namin kailangan ng change. Eh. So, um, so they transfer their responsibilities to the provincial colleges. So, ito na yung yung medyo confusing, because some people or like some um, review classes are stating na okay, it's easier not to get to Canada because wala ng clinical exam, which is not true, because Nag-change lang sila na from CAPR, a federal governing body sa Canada na nag-hold ng exam, they just um, transferred the responsibility of the clinical exam to the provincial bodies. Mm-hmm. So, from ako, I'm, I'm staying in Ontario. Um, uh, my, my provincial um, college gave us three options. So, the first one is to be a resident physiotherapist for a year. Mm-hmm. But then un- under noon, and dami pang um may may mga little components pa siya na parang kailangan um magkasama kayo palagi nung supervisor mo for like 600 hours. Tapos oh. kailangan you you've been working for like in one clinic or like in Ontario for um certain amount of hours ganun. Eh um normal kasi dito sa sa Canada na you don't work at one clinic. You work at like different clinics. So ngayon, hindi sabi nila, no, you can't, you can't do that. So mahirap maghanap ng clinic na ikaw lang yung gagawin nilang physio mm-hmm. for like the whole, the whole week. And then, ang hirap maghanap ng supervisor na magkasama kayo parate in, the, in that whole week. Yeah. And then after noon, for, for one year, they're still gonna give you, sabi nila na they're still gonna evaluate you. Pero hindi nila in-specify kung 
what type of evaluation ang gagawin nila. For all we know, baka magpa-clinical ulit sila. Baka magpa-oral revalida sila. So there's still something. <laughs> okay. So they're still thinking about what the second exam is. Yeah. Okay. But that's only like option one. Uh-huh. And then option two naman is um, the, uh, my provincial um, college is going to who, um, announce kung kailan sila magpapa-clinical exam on March. So technically, may clinical exam pa rin. <laughs> mm, right. And then the third one naman is sabi nila na if you're able to um, take the exam in Quebec. So Quebec is a different um, city in Ontario. which is mainly ano sila, French speaking. French speaking. Yeah. So they said, if you're able to challenge that exam, you're able to pass the exam in French, good to go, sige, you get your license <laughs> now. <laughs> so, guess mo, parang, they're able to give you options on how to um to gain your independent license, but they're all still gonna be an exam. Mm-hmm. So when they say na, oh, the clinical exam is discontinued na by CAPR, it doesn't mean na you're not gonna go through, like, wala na forever the clinical exam. It really mm-hmm. depends on the province where you stay at. Mm-hmm. Um, just recently, I heard um, Alberta is going through with their clinical exam this February. Um, British Columbia, BC is still going through with their clinical exam. Di ko lang alam yung date. So a lot of the provinces are still going through with the clinical exam. Mm-hmm. Well, it's sabi mo nga, it's it's in the law, so you, yeah. you can't get out of that until yeah. they change the law. <laughs> okay, okay. Y- yun yung isa sa mga reasons bakit hindi ko consider Australia and Canada kung ano pal sa pagmigrate kasi parang nakakabang ako oh, kinakabahan ako mag mag <laughs> mag mag prax sa harap ng mga ano banyaga <laughs> that, it's true <laughs> kasi even if they say na ano even if they say na it's a purely objective um exam it really is it the moment you enter the moment they hear you speak they judge you from how you look they judge you from your accent they judge you from everything you say so that's not really objective that's very subjective mm-hmm. and they have mm-hmm. this component na ang tawag is like global rating so that's yung parang that's how they perceive you globally when you enter the room so paano kung like sobrang kaba mo hindi ka makapag-smile di ba uh, that's gonna affect your global na right right so it's really hard <laughs> papasok ka sa room naka power dress ka or naka naka necktie and all ka <laughs> for the actually, global rating ano, um may may dress code pa sila oh, like, code sila. To, yeah they have to like you have to enter na naka ano ka naka um, white lab coat tapos may stat ka even if you don't use it wow. <laughs> so it's very formal mm-hmm. okay so let's say um uh, uh someone becomes a, an independent physio na yan. Ano ang responsibilities ng isang independent physio sa, sa Canada as compared to a physio or a physical therapist in the Philippines? Is it is there um, a big difference sa practice? The major difference lang siguro na masasabi ko or like the one that I've noticed the most is in terms of diagnosing a patient. Mm-hmm. Or like, um, kasi um, sa Philippines, di ba, the patient is not able to go to you directly without any... Um, prescription from the doctor or referral from the doctor with the written diagnosis of what you're going to be treating. Right. Um, however, sa dito, uh, patients can go to you directly and then ikaw bahala ka from start na mag assess ka and then afterwards you can request or you, um, if you want to ask for any uh, ancillary procedures, you can ask for the patient to go see um, other professional um, workers as well. And then um, Mostly, it's just that one. But then, like, treatment-wise, you get to do whatever, whatever. you want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, I see. Is there also a difference in the provinces in what they allow you to use uh, as a form of treatment? Like, for example, here, us in California, we're not allowed to do dry needling because mm-hmm. malakas ang, um, ang legislation powers ng mga acupuncturists dito na hindi mm-hmm. pinayaga ng mga physical therapists to use needles. But in some other states... physical therapists can do dry needling. So in 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 there, Canada, are there any like differences per province? 
Um, I'm not sure sa ibang province. I siguro from what I've noticed lang over here is um they need certificates mm-hmm. na you actually attended this course. So you actually know what you're doing prior yeah. to like di ba, hindi ka pa rin magturok nang wala kang proof na you know something about it, di ba? Right. But then um yeah, you don't you don't need specific licenses. You just need like certificates or like proof na ano na okay I know this one kasi mm-hmm. hindi ko lang to pinanood sa YouTube I actually learned about this one. Sakrap <laughs> <laughs> <up> din. No? <laughs> you learn about your your your, your physical therapist learn the, the technique through YouTube. Asa ba to na niya? YouTube I watched the uh, I watched the video <laughs> learn about it don't worry about it I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Parang ano eh kakabahan ako as a patient pag dala mo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, talking about the cost earlier, what's the average salary of a physical therapist in Canada? Um, if you start off as a um, resident physio mm-hmm. and then you work in a private clinic, it goes around, sa Ontario, it can be like around 30 to 35 Canadian dollars per hour. And then it goes higher the farther you are, or sa mas liblib ka na lugar, the higher your sweldo can be. So, the highest I've heard is like, if you go to Northern Ontario, where mm-hmm. wala nang tao, so hindi ko alam kung sinong pinifizio nila doon, <laughs> you can go as higher as $60, $70 per hour. Um, mm, not bad. That's a yeah. private practice? Outpatient? Yeah. Yep. And mm. then, it's higher... I guess it's higher than in hospitals because plus you you get more benefits when you work in the hospitals anyway and then you can get like mga uh um, 35 to 40 45 pagka ano um independent physio pa na mm-hmm. 30 to 45 30 is uh 23 dollars US dollars and 45 Canadian dollars is 35 US dollars for private practice. Yeah. But if you're the higher range would be 70 Canadian dollars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 55 USD. That's okay. Naman. May ano lang, siya, very constraints lang kasi it's Canada. It's so yeah. cold over there. So I don't know. <laughs> hindi ko, like, hindi justifiable sa akin yung ganong katas na sweldo and then ganun yung living temperature ko. Like, <laughs> okay na ako dito. <laughs> <laughs> Pero how's the cost of living naman dyan? Eh, eh, ma- malaki ba? Or kaya um, naman with a, with a, physio, with a physiotherapist? Uh, that's what it does. Kaya, kaya, uh, kaya talaga. Pero, um, siguro, um, province, ano din, mas mahal sa West Coast compare sa amin. So, I always, I, I don't drive, pero lagi akong aware sa gas prices. Di ko alam kung bakit. And then, um, sa, sa West Coast, it goes, yung, yung gas nila doon siguro nasa $1.50, $1.60, ganun. And then, one dollar per ano ba? Di ko alam. Basa na sa ganon. <laughs> and then sa amin naman na sa one one dollar and thirty one one dollar thirty five. Basa mababa kumpara sa kanila. That's why I always ask my friend because yung yung close friend ko nandun siya. I always ask him kung like do you have plans on like driving car over there? Because grabe yung gas nyo hindi makatarungan hindi. <laughs> Ah, uh, per liter. Okay. So, yun pala yun. Sabi <laughs> <laughs> ko, one dollar lang. Tapos kami, no, no, four dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so, yun pala, per liter. <laughs> per liter. Sabi kasi per gallon. So, sabi okay. four four dollars per gallon. Four, four. <laughs> almost five na dito sa amin. Per gallon. <laughs> Nagulat ako na. Ang mura naman, iliwan ako dyan. <laughs> okay, come here. <laughs> Before so, kasi, nung nasa uh, Maryland ako, sa East Coast, pagkadating ko dito, the gas prices there was uh, uh, parang one dollar one dollar eighty cents parang mm. to one ninety nine lang per 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 gallon na yon ah oh um, like mas mura five... pala doon lipat tayo doon <laughs> mas, mas mura sa amin <laughs> pero nagmahal na siya ngayon ngayon four dollars well dito sa California kasi mahal four dollars dito eh. yeah 
and it's I guess it's always like that na um the places where mas okay yung temperature mas mahal yung living cost doon uh-huh. kumpara kasi kunwari Alberta sa amin um it's a it's a it's an okay province mm-hmm. pero everything about there is cheaper um tuition fee is cheaper taxes is cheaper over there gas is cheaper so mm-hmm. i guess kasi mas malala din yung weather conditions weather condition. na Manila yeah so when they say na um Winter in Canada lasts for about like more than a year. Mm. Y- totoo yun. Magsasummer ah, totoo lang yun. siguro na mga 2-3 months, summer, and then afternoon, winter na lahat. Ganun. Mm, okay. <laughs> so kung mahilig ka sa malamig, dyan ka. Dito. Yes. Well, dito ka. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So ang, ang bilis ng oras, uh, so ang, ang dami kong natutunan sa paano maging physiotherapist dyan. Yung process... Halos same lang din eh. Credentialing, then English exam, uh, tapos the, the differences, yung, yung dalawang steps eh. The, the, the written and the clinical. Yeah. Plus the hassle of looking for a, uh, supervisor. For a supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> Doon ako na, na-confused talaga. Nung kinakwento mo. <laughs> Pag-apply ka pa lang, <laughs> pero dapat may trabaho ka na para makapag-apply ka ng license mo. Ang lang. Yeah. Okay, then... Thank you for clarifying dong ano yung uh, lumalabas for na uh, the, the changes about the, the clinical, clinical one. Yeah. Uh, medyo maraming tao maraming tao ang natuwa pero they didn't know what's what the the real yeah. story is kaya siguro ganun. Okay. So um what's your advice for our colleagues who are thinking of pursuing a career or life in Canada? So This one I always tell my friends who are planning to go over here. The process initially is very tedious. It's very expensive. But after everything, maganda talaga yung quality of life that I got in here. Like I'm very blessed na dito ako na stuck na country amidst the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, hindi ako na hassle in terms of like any um, medical expenses or like kung gusto ko magpa-test, hindi ako na, hindi ako na hasang magpa-book ng COVID test ko, magpa-book ng um, COVID shots ko. Um, other than that, come to Canada, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Go be with us now. <laughs> yes. I mean, like, kung kayo si Elsa, the cold never bothered you anyway. Come! <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. <laughs> All right, so before I let you go, meron akong, I usually uh, end my my podcast with my last bites. So, ready ka na ba? <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> my first question is, what's your recipe for success? Um, I think my recipe is really um, patience. Because mm-hmm. a lot of us, talagang gusto natin na agad-agad na successful now or like um, gusto natin when we start the process now, na nakikita na natin agad yung end goal na we're gonna be earning a lot na talagang successful na tayo but it really isn't like that in life like even for me I didn't see the pandemic happening and then going through the process of licensing for two years na um, na masastock ako sa, na ganito but then like I see it like after this hurdle talagang kailangan mo lang ng patience to see it through na if you really have the passion for your profession go for it alright great answer patience Uh, second question, if there's one thing you'd like to change in the physical therapy practice in the Philippines, say you've seen, you've been in the Philippines, you worked there, you've worked there in Canada, if there's one thing that you want to change in the PT practice in the Philippines, what would that be? I think, personally, ito sa akin, it's how the admin side of uh, clinics would control the physios. Kasi, I get it, like, money game is still a thing in the Philippines. But then through it, kasi the admin or the managing side, they're able to restrict what physios are, like, fully are capable of doing to their clients. Na parang some of the clinics I've worked in before, not in POI, I have to say that clearly, yeah. not in POI. <laughs> yeah, because you mentioned POI earlier. Yeah, so you just have to be clear. <laughs> not in POI, guys, but, like, I've worked in a clinic na parang, They don't allow you to perform certain um, treatments to people kasi nga hindi covered ng insurance or like hindi mm. sila um hindi, like hindi magdadagdag pa ng bayad but then like you know in your heart that it's gonna help them pero wala kang magagawa like it's you work there eh? <laughs> mm-hmm. that's true i think it, with 
any um any setting or anywhere because even here i we experience that and there are certain things that the admin would want you to do that mm-hmm. sometimes you you don't feel is necessary and sometimes you f- you want to do something that you feel is necessary pero hindi ka naman papayagan so mm-hmm. yeah it's 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 something that we really will face soon oh. and, i mean in anywhere as well Ah, dito hindi. Ay, dito hindi. Mahala, oo. Mahala <laughs> Sa amin dito na. <laughs> sa amin, ang kira namin yan dito. <laughs> Kung anong gusto ko gawin sa patient ko, mahala ako. <laughs> uh, buti dyan, buti dyan. Maganda healthcare system dyan. Dito restricted din kami. Uh, may may mga certain um, settings that were restricted because of insurance, because of of payment, and you know, uh, and also because of you know patients in admin and all that. Yeah. All right. Third and last uh, bite. What are the three ingredients that you feel you carry with you or you feel are essential? It can be your motto, your principle, an attitude, a trait, or a characteristic that you carry with you uh, that you 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 have each and every day. Um, in short, what are the three things that make up Reina? Um, I think the first one is optimism mm-hmm. kasi you always have to look at the like every situation with the glass half full mm-hmm. kasi like if you down yourself no one else is gonna pick you up except yourself so kailangan in every misfortunes that happens to you you see how it can turn into a positive um, experience for yourself you always have to see na okay, this one happened to me and it's really bad, but you have to be optimistic on how that experience can build you up as a person. Mm-hmm. And then the next one is your faith. Um, I've said this one because I, I moved to Canada. I was alone. I didn't have any of my family members here. I was in, like in the middle of pandemic. I had like um, some family problems back in the Philippines too. But then if you stay grounded to your faith, you hold on to something more than um, what you can control. Um, you're able to see na parang, um, okay, um, marirealize mo na there are other people or like God is still there, um, always looking out for you, even if you're alone, even if like we're in a pandemic and then you don't know what's happening in the world anymore. You always have to see through na um, it's all for His um, plan talaga. Na divine timing. <laughs> right, right. And then I guess the third one is um, me. Dito lang to nangyari sa Canada. Nung nasa Philippines ako, Manila girl ako eh. Walang gubat doon. I don't, I don't go to nature walks over there. But then when I got here, it's very healthy pala talaga na you go out and then mag, ano ka lang sa nature. And then, like, dito ko na-realize na okay, ang ganda pala ng puno. I follow the birds and look at the cherries. So that one was like something that helped me and my like um mental health na 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 realize ko na if you live in a country na masyadong malala ang winter you look for the opportunities na pag sun pag nakalabas ang sun lumabas ka din like help yourself get yourself the happy boost from the sun mm-hmm. and then ano siya eh, parang naka uplift ng mood mo uh-huh. so you guys be a nature pe- <laughs> like person. I swear it, it helps. <laughs> All right, being optimistic, faith, and being a nature person. Na yeah. Just lang na realize. Yeah, actually, yung 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 gusto ko tayong sa Canada. Eh. Yung mga nakikita ko mga photos of the, the mountains, mga lakes. Yeah. Kami ko parang ah, mas maganda yung mga scenic uh, ano jan uh, mga ganong areas than than here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maganda din naman dyan. <laughs> Certain oh, areas lang. Oo, oh, 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 pero yun lang. <laughs> Baka it's, mas fresh ang air dyan. <laughs> I think. Uh, it's hard to be it's hard to be a Canadian without loving the nature. That I can say. Kasi I think we're considered one of the countries na napakatagal sa lockdown. Hanggang ngayon naka-lockdown pa rin kami at some uh-huh. sort. Uh-huh. So, wala kang ibang pupuntahan dito kundi yung gubat. So, <laughs> you have to open yourself in the um <laughs> na kailangan magi open-minded ka na okay, I'm gonna have fun when I go outside kahit puno lang yung makikita ko because it, it really helps. <laughs> All right. Right. Okay, Rina, thank you very much for your time and and really 
explaining to us the process, the changes, and yung mga ginagawa ng physio dyan sa Canada. So thank you for for uh, giving us your time and your your, your energy sa podcast nato. <laughs> so as no a problem. as a takeaway, yung pabaon natin sa mga listeners, what's that? One thing that you want our listeners to take home from our conversation today? Um, I think one of it is don't get to um, parang wag kayong masyadong madala sa mga advertisement na okay, wala na clinical exam and then bigla kayong ma-hype up. Look through, like, do your own research talaga. Kasi I don't want people to see na, um, oh, it's easier to get to Canada na. Kasi really, it's really not. Like you have to have the um, mental strength for it, the mm-hmm. patience, the finances. And I don't want people to get the false hope na it's easier to get to Canada now kasi wala na clinical exam. Mm-hmm. So that's like one thing na, na ano ko, And then I have a lot of friends messaging me too na parang, is it true? Is it true? Is it true? Na parang, okay. And it's all caused by like one post lang na nagsabi na wala na clinical uh, exam. And then a lot of people are making such a big fuss about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So for those who are trying to research, punta lang kayo sa website ng yeah. CAPR. CAPR and your provincial college. Mm-hmm. So dapat palang, pag you're thinking about moving to Canada, iniisip mo na ako sa kapupuntang province. Yeah. Okay. Tama, tama naman, tama naman yan. Alright. <laughs> Thank you very much again, Reina, for your time and for being no in the podcast. No problem. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.